to one language, you can add 10 languages. Uh, it's, it works really nice and it saves the website owner any communication with, with a translator and no need for adding all these translation plugins that are sometimes hard to uh, configure. You can see here, for example, on our WP Toronto website over here, this is a Weglot uh, menu. So for example, you want to see your site in French, the users would click on French here and on the fly, everything is translated into French. No need to do anything. The only need, thing you had to do is purchase a plugin, which is a premium plugin. It costs money, um, depends on, on how many words you have on the site and how many languages you would like to translate. So I can, from my experience, I can uh, highly uh, recommend um, this plugin. Um, all right, let's go back to our uh, meetup page. And as I said, the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna look at the comments in a chronological order. Um, oh no, this is not the correct, this is the last meetup. We'll open the current one. Oh, and just one more thing. Um, tomorrow, just a shout out to WP Durham. They're, they're holding a meetup um, about uh, custom forms in WordPress, how to configure them, how to use them, tips and tricks. Um, I will be showing uh, work with uh, Contact Form 7, but if you wanna uh, join, go to Meetup and, and look for uh, WordPress, and then you will find this link for their Meetup uh, tomorrow. Um, let's see here, just a second. Just, okay, we're recording. Uh, Robin, you're admitting who whoever is. Yes, I admitted. I think it was Lorenzo, and then someone else. Uh, maybe yeah, Rick. I see another person here. I'll quickly add him in. Uh, okay, and I'll share my screen again and go back. Where is that? This is it. Let's wait for the comments to load up. All right. Uh, is Andy here? All right, so Andy asked some help from WordPress sites, but I guess he's not here. Um, is Alfred here? They're taking attendance? Well, people. <clears throat> Okay. So no Alfred? I guess not. All right. And Melanie is <laughs> After here. the comments. So Melanie's next. Yeah. Melanie's here. All right, Melanie, take it away. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, so uh, if you like, um, I'm well, first of all, I'm working on um, a WordPress website. It's for our portfolio, but I'm building the whole site. It's the second site I've built. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's online, but it's under construction, so it's not visible. So I can put the login in the chat so you can see it, or I can share my screen. Yeah, share your screen. Go ahead and walk us through your issue, and we'll see how we can help. Okay, cool. So I'll stop my share and you can go ahead and share. Okay. OK, 
Okay, just take you out of my notes. Um, okay, so this is my site and it's like I said, it's not finished. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Okay, cool. So um, the, the question I have is under my projects page, Um, this is my portfolio. Um, I'm a user experience designer, but I'm in school. So this is part of my class project. And um, basically all I want to be able to do is, um, the, this is a template that I use, the, the home remodelers template from Astra. Um, and what I want to be able to do is show an image like this one, for example, and click on it and then it goes to another page that basically has a description and images and links to the um, outline of the project itself. So I, I'd just like to have some like just simple images on the, the projects page and then link off to another page. And I wasn't sure, cause I, I built my last site a little while ago. So I wasn't sure how to, um, like build the page and then link it to the image. So right now this is sort of a gallery. It's it's not linking anywhere. Right. And do you, have you created, for example, the innovation hub domains, have you created a page like that? Um, I worked in a, in a, on a project called the innovation hub and I did some work for them. And so I have like, for example, I have a like Google slides of the PowerPoint presentations that I've done and I'm going to have a whole page describing the entire project in more detail, but all I want the, the visitor to do is click on innovation hub, the, the logo and it go to the page where it describes the project. Okay, so what you essentially need is. It's sort of like uh, what you're creating is sort of like an archive page, which is this for your project. And when, when the user clicks on it, he would reach the, the descriptive page or the, the actual post page of that specific project. Right. Um, there are, like, like you said, there are portfolio um, post types that you can use for that. Uh, here, I'm not sure you used the correct tool for it, meaning use this gallery, which has like a top filter for the different types of, of work that you've done. Um, what you should see is if uh, for each image that you upload here in the, in the UI of, of this gallery, sometimes they have an option to uh, link the image to a different page, to another page. It, it could be an internal link, it could be an uh, external link. Um, and then what you would do, if you want to keep working with this type of layout, you would create all these pages, for example, that, that you have here for each thumbnail, you would create a, a page or a post. Right. And then after you create it, you would copy the link of that page and paste it here in the, this gallery uh, uh, interface. So okay. I'm not sure, I mean, I don't know all the galleries in the WordPress world, but if this is if this gallery has this functionality in it, if it's, I know that uh, some WordPress galleries do have it, some don't have it. I think it does, um, but I'm not positive, and I hope it. I really hope it does because I checked with wp.org, like WordPress.org, and I was in the forums. And somebody answered me and they said that it was possible, but then I just, um, I haven't worked on it in about a week. And um, because you were having your meetup, I thought I would check with all of you. Um, oh. just What's to see the if theme again? Pardon? What theme is the site using? Uh, Astra. Astra. And uh, has this particular page uh, an Astra template or is it an Elementor uh, page? It's a, it's a, it's an Astra template. See, all of these images here are not mine. They're from the template. Only this one is mine. Oh, okay. So they're just dummies to demonstrate. Right. 
And so each one of these is a tile, I, I would assume that when you're uh, in your edit mode, you can click on the tile and change that image title and so on. Is that how it works? Yes. Okay, well, we can, and is there know, a slot well, we then can... for the URL for the page to which you go when you click on that image? Yeah, I'd like to, to go to a, an archive page. Right, but is there is there for each tile? When no. When you click on it, um, you know, like a little form that comes up that lets you put in the title Kitchen Retouch and put in the URL for that particular image to relate to. I mean, is that the case? I'm not sure. I'd have to go into Elementor. I use Elementor. No, but um, if it was created, if it's a Divi template, then it's controlled. It's Divi documentation. No, it's not, you want, not, right? You didn't not say Divi. Didn't. I'm sorry, Astra. Right, it's yeah. an Astra theme and Astra template. Right. So I just need to know how to create a page that's an archive page that this will lead to. Right. That's, and that's I guess one question is whether it's a page or a post that you want. Is the content that the, the Innovation Hub goes to, is that like evergreen permanent content that's not going to change at all? Um, or is it more like a post that you might change it a month from now to a different one or revise it or update it or whatever? Um, if I do more work with them, I might update it. But for, for now, it was work done in 2017. And um, well, the reason I ask is that a post, which is what most people would use here, I think, um, is sort of the normal thing to do. But if you had content that wouldn't change at all, like an about page, if that's what this innovation hub was to be about this project rather than something more detailed and dynamic, then a page would do the trick. So let's assume it's a post. So somewhere in the documentation for Astra, you know, the gallery template, it's going to tell you how to relate each image to the page, to the post rather that you're creating that you go to when you click on it. The, that the gallery's purpose is to present these images so that when you click on them, they either present another image, a larger version, or they take you somewhere. I mean, that's the whole idea behind a gallery, right? Yeah. So the template wouldn't make any sense if it didn't make a provision specifically for the post, each one that you need to create for each tile in the gallery, mm. right? So it's all something very straightforward in the Astra documentation to use this particular template. Now, if it were Elementor, you, and this is a set of tiles, then normally what happens to the page builder, you click on a tile and a, something the equivalent of a form pops up or call it a form. And it contains the information that, that the tile needs as well as any formatting instructions that are specific to that tile and different from the other tiles. But you do either you know, a tile and then copy it to replicate it or you make each tile individual and you make changes to each one that way. But that's the page builder approach, which is what I'm from most familiar with. A template in essence is no different, but the mechanics of how you get to where this data belongs uh, may not be exactly the same as the <clears throat> page builder would do it. You, Dan, you would know more about Astra template I would think than me. Well, what we can do, you know, you can jump in to the editing screen and we can see if in a few minutes we can find a solution. Otherwise the solution would be like what Robin said, look deeper in the Astra documentation or if, it, I, don't, I don't know if you're using Elementor or not, but Elementor has an option for linking thumbnails and, and showing like this type of gallery with a filter and then you would have uh, a link to that specific page that you want. So we can take a look at the back end of this page, see if we can help you with a, like with a short, sweet solution. Okay. Uh, but if, if not, you know, you would have to look at the, the docs. Okay. So I'll just go into edit with Elementor. No, we, if it wasn't made with Elementor, we don't want Elementor. It was made with Elementor. Oh, I thought I just, I asked that and I thought you said it wasn't. Oh no. It, it, oh, okay, that, that's, that, now that's we're what in I straightforward territory. Yeah. It definitely is editable at this level. Okay, now click, doesn't matter where. So we'll activate this module and we'll see the, the options on the left. Okay, 
So now you have this uh, gallery. You see on the left, 10 images selected. Now click on the little pencil there or pen. Okay, so I'm just going to write this down as you talk. So click on. Uh, this meeting is recorded also, so you'll be asked. Oh, perfect. To the video. Perfect. Okay, so click on the pencil. Okay. Now, if you click on the first, like on the innovation hub. Uh, let's see. Now scroll on the right hand side. Can you scroll it down a bit? No, on the, on the right panel. Yeah. Uh, this section. Over here? Yeah. I'm just going to move these. Right Doesn't here. have anything to scroll down to? Uh, no, just this. Uh, okay. So here we just have the, the caption and the alt text. Um, let's close this. Okay, just one moment. Okay. And on the left hand side, where it says gallery. Yep. Can you scroll down down a bit? Uh, additional options? No. Yeah, you could try additional options, although I'm not sure if it's there. Okay, so link target. You see it says click action custom link. Yep. And where it says how to assign Custom link for images? Yes. I think that could be your solution. Yep. Okay. So it was. Uh, you clicked on the gallery module, and then on the left hand side, you clicked on additional options. Okay. And then over <laughs> here, how to assign. Now, this, this looks like an add on for Elementor. It's not like the, the original. Okay. Plugin. Not that it matters, just. Sounds it works. So you know. Um, so you can, if you click on that, you, it'll probably tell you how you can assign a link for each image, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, you see, this is an Elementor add on it. In any way, this is, yeah, this is how they explain. Yeah. So I think that if you follow these steps, So um, I guess my question is, uh, like, how do I build the archive page if it's if it doesn't take too long or if if you can? Well, put... you would what you would need to do again, and there are like twenty ways to do it. I'm just giving you the you know the, the, the first solution. Maybe you know there are lots of ways to do it. So one way, if we go with the post way. So I what I would do, I cr would create a category called portfolio. And then create a post. And in the post, put in the stuff you want for that uh, project. You okay. An image, a bit of text, a video if you want, a gallery, whatever you want to spill into that post. Yep. And uh, you, and make it a part of the portfolio category. That, that's just for organization's sake. Okay. And then after you created that post, publish it. Okay. And then you have the link. And then you take that link, the URL, and you paste it onto uh, the specific image here in the gallery, which you want when a user clicks on to go to that post. Okay. That's like one out of 50 ways to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the other option is making a page as opposed to a post. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can make a page. Um, Again, for organization's sake, you, you you might even, I don't know if this is a page, uh, you can make the, those pages, uh, child pages of this page. So in the back end, it'll be easier for you to organize it. So you will see all your, your portfolio uh, projects under this uh, uh, parent page. Yeah. And then, yeah, you could, you could create uh, all those page, a page for each project. And again, use the URL. Another thing you can do if you're using Elementor, look into creating Elementor templates. This is a more advanced topic, but what you can do is you can create a template with Elementor, which 
your projects page will use. And then every time you open the editor with the projects page, you'll, you'll already have the fields you need for the project. So if you set up a, a template, for example, and you know, in the top part, you will have like the featured image, and then you have a bit of text. And then under that, a gallery, you can create a template. So every project page will have the same layout. And you don't, you won't have to like rethink the layout and, you know, and also for, as a, as a user, uh, at, for user experience, it's nicer when you go into like the project pages, the pages have the same layout and structure rather than each page things moving around and not aligned and et cetera. Right. So, so if you look into, you know, you go to YouTube type elementor template um you'll you'll find lots of videos and also if you're using the pro elementor you'll have some built-in templates you can use okay so is it a template for the whole website or just for the projects page no just for the page okay you can keep using keep on using astra the theme keep on using elementor which is the page builder and right. for elementor you can create templates for specific pages you can create a template for the for a specific project, you can create a template for a blog. You can create a, a template for the blog archive. Various types of uh, templates for various types of pages on your website. Because I think I'd rather do that, just because, like as you can see, Innovation Hub is is bigger than the other images, and I don't want I want them all to be the same size. So perhaps I'll look into Elementor template for the for the projects page, just so I can make sure that everything is aligned. Well, but this is this is uh, well, this is okay to use. You just have to reset the sizes when, like, when you create this image, the Innovation Hub. Let's say it's three hundred by three hundred pixels. Okay. Right. Create all your thumbnail project images three hundred by three hundred, and then they'll be the same size. The reason this is bigger than the others is because they're not the same proportions. Okay. Well, and that one of them is yours, and the rest of them are just demo content. Right. Yeah, but the, the, the way they created the demo uh, images are different dimensions, and that's why it's, it looks like unproportionate. Right. Uh, so in other words, it's not a very good demo since the images don't fit the tile. No, no, they do. Well, <clears throat> their images fit. Al, uh, like the, the new image is a different size. That's the reason. So in other words, uh -huh. these tiles are dependent on the image size or the, well, the image they, is dependent on the tile size? Well, I don't know how. Well, well what you're saying look. is that since the image is larger than the others, then it's just increased the size of the tile. Yeah, Any event, one alternative to creating either pages or posts in the usual way is a pop up. Uh, the way that the WordPress plugins repository works, uh, when you're in your own site in the admin pages, if you happen to go to your theme page, when you click on the theme that you've loaded or any others you've got there, you'll get a pop-up window with the details of the theme in it. You could have a post pop up uh, on top of this page. And then when you dismiss it, you are still on this gallery page. Personally, I don't think that's such a great idea, but it's certainly something to consider when you've got gallery images that sometimes you just <clears throat> want to give it some basic image details and there's no real story to tell. Right, but it's not a it, well. It's not a light box here. She wants actual a page about the project, which will also get her some SEO. You know, if you have like a couple hundred words on the page or some fo other photo galleries, and also these yeah, I mean, those are good arguments for making posts. Um, but the pop up could itself be a post. It's just the way it's presented. Right, um, but then in any event, it just the the. the the better path is the one that Dan's proposed because that's quite straightforward and you'll be able to implement that when things relatively quickly and then riff on that once you've got it working rather than do something more complex and have trouble getting it off the ground. So, so about the templates, excuse me, do the other page builders also do templates? Uh, I think uh, Divi has templates. I think it's a, it's a, a for the major page builders, it's a requirement to be able to create templates and have also global content snippets, which are smaller versions, but like templates 
so that either in a template or in a snippet, when you reuse it, uh, any changes you later make to that will affect all existing instances of that template. Uh, or it can be a template you use and you can change it each time in small ways. But Dan made the case for consistency. If you have more than one gallery, it it's probably better if they are designed the same way and look like they mm -hmm. belong together by well, using it one template yeah. for two pages rather than two different pages. I like site origin. I use that a lot, but I have never seen anything about templates and I like that idea. Yeah, I think most of the uh, major page builders have that option because it's it's a needed option when you create uh, frameworks, we'll create website with recurring content. You want you want to <clears> keep <throat> it consistent. <laughs> I'm in the middle of that now, so yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Uh, okay, Melanie, any other questions about your task here? No, I think I mean that'll definitely get me started. So I really appreciate your help. Great. So next month, next meetup, you'll show us. Your gallery with the pages. I hope so. Yes, I, it has to be done next month. So yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay. So let's go back and uh, look at the other comments here. All right. Susan, you're here. Oh, you're muted. There. Okay. Well, now I've heard from what Melanie has been talking about with you that there are things that I want to do. So I've been keeping notes on her stuff and I'll try and keep notes on my questions. So I will attempt to share my screen so you can visit the site I am trying to design. Okay, uh, I'll stop my share so you can share. Okay. Now you can go ahead and before you dive in, mm -hmm. give us like, you can start sharing, but give us a background so we all understand we'll all be on the same page because you're dealing okay. with it. But for us, it's totally new. Yes. For many years, my husband and I, he writes, I photograph. We have a world famous in small circles website called jazzword.com. So you're welcome to take a look at that. For almost as many years. Um, it was designed by a brilliant friend of Ken's, web designer, blah, 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 um, who at this point, which is about 15 years since its origin, he's not really as interested in working on it, but I have always wanted to have some aspect of Jazz Word that I could manage myself. And the webmaster recommended WordPress, probably 15 years ago. And I've worked on the site maybe three times since then because my principal work is not photography, but COVID has given me time to work on my photography. So we have Jazz Word and I have tried to set up a site or I have a site which is hosted. I'm just gonna try and figure out how I take you to my screen. So if you click on the green button at the bottom where it says, Share screen. Share screen, yeah. Up, like a window will pop up. Yes. And then you select the screen, usually, you know, desktop one or desktop two, the whole screen, and click on the blue button in the bottom right, share. I think we, did you go away? Let's yeah. see now. Are you here? I'm here. I'm just trying to figure out, okay, okay. screen. Share, all right. Oh, there you go. Now, how do, do, how and where do I put in? Now just browse to your site. Like you would normally. Like first she's gotta to go to a browser, right? A browser. Yeah, she's in the browser. She's in the I'm browser. I'm in a browser. Yeah, you can. And you I can... want to go to <clears throat> something that I haven't put on this machine yet. So I'm going to put in a URL. And where should I put that? A new tab, probably. Yeah, you can click on the little plus there. 
<laughs> Sorry, I warned you. Like, I really, I just survived teaching with Blackboard for the first time. It was really awful. Um, new tab. Okay, folks, I want a new tab. Let's make you can, this. You can, uh, if you're on PC, you can do Control T or Mac Command. Let's try that. There. Okay. That worked. Oh, solutions.ca. There. Okay. Can you see my really exciting website? Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> it's been like that, but you see in June, on June 2017, I put something on it. And so at the time, I know I had downloaded WordPress. I'm just trying to turn on my question sheet on my other machine here. Um, I loaded WordPress, but I am wondering if I should, first of all, get WordPress and start over again. No. Well, you have WordPress installed. I do, but it's an old version. It's five point something. Right. So, okay. So let's, let's uh, take one step back. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, Robin, feel free to jump in. Well, let's let's start off with who's the host? Where where is this hosted? The host is something I cannot figure out because it's from our man we call Mr. Wizard, who did not reply to my email asking exactly who is hosting. All right. So um, that's not a very good start. If you want to no. start creating your website, you know, it's you pretty much have to know what that one is. It's like the ground <laughs> ground zero. You want to have a reliable host because yeah, down the road after a couple of months of work on your website, if the site goes down and you can't get reach of who's taking care of it, that's a problem. So I would suggest if that person you can't reach him or he doesn't know, he doesn't give you answers. Now you've got like nothing to lose, right? Exactly. Uh, I would suggest you look into one of the reliable hosts out there, which oh, you know, just wait a sec, Dan. I, I think what. The, the key point is that if you don't know who the host is, mm -hmm. or even if you do know the host, but you don't have a login or the credentials to access the site because the person who created it is not responding or isn't available, essentially th that's it for that site and that particular exercise. And you'll need to start over from scratch. And that's what Dan is just starting you off on yeah. to say. The first step is to find a good host because everything <clears throat> follows from that initial step. And so the fork in the road is, do, can I use my current host or do I have to go to a new host? Once that question is resolved, let's assume for discussion here that you, you find the host for this site and you have access to the site. Let's just assume that because otherwise you start with a, clean, a fresh clean slate and then with a new host and a new site. So that answers your question. She, yeah, she, said she, installed like it. she said she installed this site, so she obviously was able to install Word. Well, she did that three years ago. <laughs> At least three years ago. Does she have um, the password to get into it, to log in? No. Right, but I think that's we don't have it now, and that's the problem. Okay, so back to Dan. Just I just wanted to inject that one point. Right, so this is like the basic, basic step you would need to do you have to know where your site is hosted. It's uh, something agree. fundamental before building your website. It's like, you know, it's like you say, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy a house. Where is it? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No, um, it's really strange. Now, what I wanted to ask though, can JazzWord be hosted on a different site? Cause it's, it's all fine. It's really complex and I don't want to touch it. I have a gallery on there, but I want to put one on here. So if I get a new host, does that have any relationship to JazzWord, which I do want to be able to link through from my opening page, Right. just so like Melanie. It doesn't have to be. Some sites, okay. you can have multiple sites hosted in the same server and that's how it usually works or on the same even your same uh hosting plan but um you would have to see uh where uh the jazz site is hosted not touch that because that's going okay are they understood and take care of the susan solutions 
uh, a website, meaning uh, either, you know, talk to the person who maybe is hosting your jazz site and tell them, listen, I got another site. Can you host it too? Yeah. And he'll create another plan for your site. Uh, mm -hmm. but usually taking down a site or removing a site, you know, you shouldn't, it shouldn't influence other sites. But again, I yeah. don't you know, until you see the setup, don't make any assumptions. There's a couple of points okay. uh, that I might add. One is yeah. that if you are involved in the administration of the jazz site or might be in the future, no. there's an advantage in having more, if you have two sites, there's an advantage in having them on the same host because then you only have to learn one way to, to manage the site. If you have two hosts, they may have different ways of managing sites. Mm. So you'd have to learn two different things to the same end. So that's one point. Uh, the other mm. point is the, your question, your, your basic question about linking the two. Um, linking in that manner is really what the web is all about. That's what makes the Precisely. internet. Precisely. And so it doesn't matter where something's hosted or how it's hosted. If it can generate a URL for a web server, then you can link to that resource uh, any way you want. Um, that's the whole sort of beauty of the way the web works. Um, and the hosting aspect of it is really just background um, complexity <clears throat> that doesn't, that's not involved in this linking process, but there's nothing to do with the host. Except I guess okay. with respect to the domain name. In, yeah, this is I really guess that's helpful. one issue. If your domain name, who, who's the register? Do you know who the registrar is for your domain name? Well, it was um, Canada Names, I think. Anyway, that you, you need to be in control of your domain name. Yes. So yeah. put that on your list of things to sort out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It can be a headache <laughs> when you can't find the original registrant <laughs> for a domain name. No, um, I know. And once upon a time, way back in the early days of the web, clients would just go out and register names willy-nilly <laughs> with all kinds of different registrars on different countries and different levels. Um, yes. And then give you, the, I mean, I, one client gave me a mess of like 30 domain names for six continents and a dozen websites. <laughs> well, I always like the dot .tv, which and it is was, And it was Hulu. months of clerical work to find yeah. me, get them all sorted out and properly organized and so on. I also found when I started uh, with getting the domain names registered and hosting, I, I began, they put them all, put them all in the same place. Oh yeah, this is really good. And then what would happen is something would happen with the hosting. And then all of a sudden I had to do something about not only the hosting, but the domain name and blah, 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 blah. So now I separate them and I have hosting in one spot and my domain name registered through a place that registers domain names. So if one goes wrong, I still have the other. I don't have yeah. that. Correct. And, and you would also here. like to separate the email also. Don't, don't rely on, on the hosting email. Use a different email service because again, like what oh, really? Dale said, if your site is down, if the host is down, and it's also serving your emails, then your email is down too. Well, I didn't mean down. I meant they sell to, to another person to take over in that. But what I was able to do with that was what I change it. Nowadays, a lot of the hosting are really efficient and they just take everything over, move it over for you. God bless their little hearts. Cause I mean, <laughs> I really like that. <clears throat> Makes me Susan, is there any content on the old site that you would want to carry forward to the new one? Uh, yes, yes and no. What a typical answer. Okay, JazzWord has this wonderful gallery O, that's O for O'Connor, my last name, um, which has been called, it's much more current now because I, I upload more no, frequently. It's just the, old, the, the Susan site. In, in the, you know, the Susan O Solutions site has nothing but what you see. Okay, so in other words, throwing it away or restarting isn't going I to think, have any content loss. Well, uh, yeah. Because that makes, that makes life re relatively That's, simpler. Yeah. Okay, so this was my pro, well, I don't know whether it's a problem. In terms of figuring out where to start now with what I've got, even though I'm not really sure where it is, um, eventually Mr. Wizard will surface and uh, he'll tell us perhaps, but I'm trying to figure out how I could 
put a WordPress template on here, for example, and start building what I want, which is a site that has photography uh, and my professional life. Photography is going to have two directions. There's the musician portraits and some travel stuff that I do in relation to that. And then some professional aspects of my other work and possibly a third area. So where Melanie has say five pictures, I'm seeking one large and three small, which I think is the masonry template. Well, once you once you've figured out whether you're how you're going about the step regarding the hosting and okay. whether or not you're going to upgrade or <clears throat> install a fresh, um, then what you just listed are your requirements or the plan mm -hmm. you have for what you want to do. Yeah. If you write that down, you can use that as the basis then to search for a theme, which will provide yes. you with a variety of things uh, that you'll learn about in due course. But that mm. would be one of your next steps mm. is to choose a yeah, theme. Yeah, and the, the tantalizing problem is that I've already started doing that. I've had the plan for a few years um, and I've started looking at things. So I think, oh, oh, got to go. But no, the hosting thing, I've just got a big note here. Number one um, <laughs> is figure that out. Okay, well, I'll keep uh, trying to contact Mr. Wizard, who's moved out of town um, from downtown Toronto to Thornbury, we're not sure why he's kind of an urban New York kind of guy, but never mind. Um, so yeah, so I will work on that. And then my other question, um, before I really start work on anything, I I have had, but can no longer log in, as you see down here, this part of my site. Um, it doesn't accept my email address because I think it's probably something that's long since been abandoned and sold to somebody. Um, I've tried every email I've had in the last five years and nothing gets me in. But um, what I need to be able to do is back things up. And our friend had set up a development site, which I can't access. I think I get a 404 error when I try to get to that um, repeatedly, but that's gone. So how do you set up a development site or what's the best way to back up your work before you upload it? to the official Susan O Solutions website. So you can you can develop locally with WordPress. For that, it's it's quite an advanced uh, thing to do. Um, okay. You would need to install a server on your uh, on your machine, on your PC or Mac. There are a few tools for that, like MAMP or ZAMP or or even there's a, a flywheel that's a hosting company. They have their own uh, software for that. It's called Locale. And oh, yeah. that is, um, it's not really for backing up, but it's for actually creating your site on your local machine. Mm -hmm. And then once you're ready, you push it to the server, either the staging server or your end production server. But okay. those are things that, you know, they're quite a bit technical and, you know, I'm not sure that they are for you. What I would suggest yeah. for you is if you are going to build a site, uh, you would do some research based on your needs, your specifications, and then you would go and look for a theme oh, look at that. to serve uh, your, uh, your needs. So I'll show you, for example, Mm, um, where I uh, uh, where you can where you can look for themes uh, if you go to uh, hold on oh. wordpress.org here we go whoops so wordpress.org slash themes so yes. over here there are like you see just a little <laughs> less than 4,000 of them and <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit of choice. Yeah, I right. know. Hey. But what, what you need to do, see they have a feature filter here, which you can select what you need or what you want. 
And for example, let's say, let's say I, I want the, let's pick just, I don't know, Ocean WP. So I click on more info and a few things that we can take a look here that can help us in, in the decision making. So we can see when it was last updated, which is very important because oh, if you see a yeah. theme that was last updated uh, November 16, 2010, you know, that's, that's like, so, sort of like a, a red light for you. Yeah. Um, and then you see how many installations and you see the Ooh. ratings also. So this looks like a pretty good uh, theme, right? Mm -hmm. So you would read a little about it and maybe go on YouTube or go on Google and, and do a bit of investigation how good this uh, theme is. And then you narrow down your choices to a few and then you decide with which one to go and you install it on your site. And then you work on it. You, uh, you, know, you, you customize the colors, the logo, the content, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. you wouldn't have that step of, of, of uh, developing locally because it's, it's quite a high technical hurdle. Um, but what you can, can do is in terms of backup and restoring and, and having all those features, those are features that I recommend that you mm -hmm. have it as part of uh, the hosting plan. That's yeah, why it's okay. very important to yeah. have a good, a good host. A host which tells you, listen, yeah, I do daily backups. Yep. And if you want to restore your site, if something happens, I can help you restore it with a click of a button. This is what you have to look right. for when you host your site. You see, and I think we have all that, but the problem is we don't know. And there are two of the three of us, two of us being the, the other half of the household here, and I don't really know much. Like Ken puts up daily reviews and excerpts and links and what have you. So he can do that. I can put photos on my gallery in there, but there's nothing much else that we know. Um, and that's really i mean you see my gray hair we're all about the same age group uh the three of us and i think we need some succession planning i would like to get things worked out i thought of i mean i can't i'm not really in a position to afford to have someone design this professionally but i thought i'd kind of like to get it started and maybe have some professional input at a certain point but keep it at a point where i can update my own section as it were Right. So, so yeah, so it's back to the hosting issue. Okay. And, and as you said, it's all about getting started. Once yes. you get started, you, you learn and you, you start doing stuff, you make mistakes, you fix them, you learn. As long yeah. as you don't get started, it'll be very hard to, you know, to get help. I know. So you have to then, jump to the water in the water. Dan, you were very right about the hosting thing and the backup. I, I've always had good hosting and always had good backup. I did not realize that now you really have to pay attention to that when you get hosting. Sure. And, and uh, one of yeah. my clients and that had a problem and I was shocked to find out they were backing up their system. I, I, so yeah, oh. you were very right on that. Very right on that, Dan, really. Thanks, Dale. Yeah. And Susan, check out the chat. I see that Lorenzo. Yeah, and also I, just, I started, Salman just sent me a phone number and I see the messages are adding yeah. up here. Right, um, so you can you can work with that and maybe you can utilize your current host and maybe there will uh, be a, a solution for you. Yeah. Oh, Salman. CAD NS, that's probably Canadian Name Service. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, let me just make some notes here. <laughs> um, this is great. Okay, thanks, Salman. And uh, let me get this and I'll just mute. And I'm, oh, I'm going to find that host. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere i'm thinking of dale and all your backups and backups you're a woman after my own heart okay all right so susan i hope we we helped you here and uh we'll look forward to seeing I'm quite you sure think. what she's backing up though because it's a vanilla site right no content and it's uh 19 it's 2017 so for uh antiquity sake definitely make a backup but since the first step you'll make will be to upgrade it to the modern version yes, uh, that's right which is about four uh, major changes I just back up everything online i'm online. not sure if it's even worth the effort of backing it up the first time but if <laughs> the host mind. provides it 
click the button and get it for free. I mean, it's exactly. It's, yeah. No, it's we need to right? include that back up. Okay. So do, do consider in your themes, the, the um, themes that WordPress itself, wordpress.org uh, provides each time it does a major version of WordPress. And so the current one is called 2020 and it, the words spelled out. Uh -huh. And there's a 2019 and a 2018 and 2017 and so on. And they are designed to conform to the best practices in terms of development, um, to be flexible, you know, multi-purpose, blah, blah, to, to showcase WordPress's quality. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're, they're worth considering um, along with the major themes, um, which have every bell and whistle that you can possibly imagine. Um, at the expense of having to study a lot of documentation to figure them out. Yeah. And, and then there's everything in between those two. That's, it. Um, that's not me. Uh, so no. So I'm, oh, you're, you people are wonderful. I'm, I've got questions and ideas all over the place here. Um, okay. Salmon. All right. Okay. Let me mute again and get out of your hair. Now, should I... All right, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Oh. Okay. Yeah, now we can hear you. We, you we yeah, hear sorry. You. No, just saying thanks all around. And <laughs> Salman, you're a great detective. I may be contacting you again, but I'm going to wait till our next meeting. That's my deadline to find out the basics. All right. Okay. Great. Glad so we I help. now will mute. So don't tell me any more tips. I might overflow. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So uh, next up is Rick. I'm not sure if he's here. Uh, his question was about getting a not, not secure uh, message in the browser. Let me just click here on the site. I don't think Rick's here because I looked at the. Um... Yeah, he's not here, but we can talk about this yeah. because this is an issue that a lot, a lot of people get. So we can see once we landed on his site, we can see you here on the top left, not secure. And this is because uh, his site is uh, served via HTTP and not HTTPS. Um, now, Lorenzo's uh, suggestion was that he go to the host because, in fact, for most of us, what what's required to get rid of that um, mm -hmm. insecure access or or warning um, is the SSL certificate um, for the domain, and so that's correct. That in the vast majority of cases would come from the host, and as, if it's a cPanel host that's a very straightforward sort of process that involves almost no time at all on the host end after you make a request or do it yourself. And that represents a, at least a solid 5% of the work involved in going to SSL. Uh, for the group of us, um, what SSL stands for, um, what does it stand for, by the way, Dan? I, my secure mind's socket blank. layer. Uh, simple secure layers. No, secure socket layer. That's the the, the actual connection between the browser and the server. Yes, the connection between those two, the browser you're using and the server providing the content is encrypted. And so SSL, uh, an SSL certificate uh, tells mm -hmm. people, you included, that your site is um, equipped in this fashion and therefore protects um, the data that's moving between the browser, the server and the browser. Um, so the, the mechanism to, for the SSL certificate is at the host end, but the key things from the website owner's point of view are a half a dozen things you have to do, which depend to a certain extent on how old your site is and how much content it has. One of the things that SSL does is it tells people that all of the content you're providing, not just the post itself, but the images, the JavaScript, if any, and other elements that are brought to make up a page or post, that they are also encrypted. And so when you have a mix of encrypted and unencrypted content, Google flags that 
up where you see that um, uh, not secure message uh, to indicate that there's mixed content and it's not fully secure. So to reach the highest level of security and get a green symbol or green icon from Google in your browser, you have to make sure that you detected and found all of that non-secure content and changed it over to being HTTPS rather than HTTP in its URL, the JavaScript, the image, and what have you. Uh, that's sort of one category of issues you deal with. Another is when someone makes a request using your old HTTP uh, addressing, you want the site to switch them over automatically to HTTPS and return that page. And there's a mechanism in WordPress to turn that on so that it works that way. And there's other issues that are similar mm -hmm. to that that you have to learn about and go to you know go to work and and sort them out in order for the um, Google green icon to appear, which is the goal of the, ulti the ultimate goal of the exercise, where Google certifies or Google attests that all of the content you're receiving for a given URL is encrypted and there are no parts of it which are unencrypted and therefore mm -hmm. expose you to risk. Right. WordPress, and you have to go to WordPress after you do that to make sure it works? No. It's between you and whoever uses your site that the you know uh, uh, content being delivered is encrypted. It it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. What Google's doing is simply noting as the content flows through the browser whether it's all HTTPS or not, and if it isn't, it's flagged. Well, I just did that with a site yesterday. By the way, I, it was still HTTP and. So I went in and I could get the free security with the hosting. So I said, fine, gimme, gimme. And then I said it would take a little bit for it to start showing. And I went back and I couldn't see it. And then like for the longest time, and I haven't checked today yet. Well, one of the things, for example, that you have to do, uh, because WordPress stores the URLs in a post in their full form, meaning that if it's a link within your site, it has your whole URL with the domain name and so on, and the HTTP. So one of the steps in going SSL successfully is to search and replace every instance of your domain name in the database of post content and page content and replace them with HTTPS. Not just search and replace it in a, in a normal um, regular expression way, but rather that there's, um, there's something in the database design or the way databases work that the search and replace tool has to be designed for a database. I, I got an idea where to do It's that. called serialization, that's the issue. So there are plugins, one in particular whose name escapes me, that is specifically designed for this SSL requirement. And it knows how to find and replace without screwing the database up in the process. If you just search and replace using, you know, a, data, a database tool uh, as if it wasn't a WordPress database, then you'll end up with a, a fair amount of corruption in the database. So you, you just have to make sure that the tool you're using is one intended to be used for this WordPress database operation. I have and, a few. When, a it, few when it is, to add they here. say so right up front. Uh, a few points to add. Uh, thanks, Robin. Um, today, since SSL is a uh, standard de facto, um, hosting providers, they turn it on usually automatically. So you would, if you, you host your site, it usually you would have this SSL turned on, you install a new site, everything will be okay. Um, the issue happens when sometimes you migrate an old site or you started building a site and then just later on the host offered you an SSL, then some issues arise. Now, okay. yeah. what, uh, what I, uh, a tool that I use apart from what Robin says, which is uh, using search and replace uh, database queries and stuff like that. There's a very simple uh, plugin, which is called uh, really, Simple SSL. 
No. <laughs> really simple SSL. Yeah, really you simple remember SSL that one. <laughs> is a plugin for WordPress, which okay. you install in your site. Oh, and good. it takes care of like 95% uh, of the SSL issues. It, it replaces HTTP. And is this the one that instead of fixing the mixed content, it just directs around it? And so therefore, no, no, it can always also have fix, the mixed content problem. It can also fix mixed content. But how does it fix which, it though? Does it, I, hold on, I understand hold on. that plugin. Robin, let me, let me just finish. Okay, sorry. Um, it can finish, it can uh, fix mixed content. Um, if it's a deeper issue with mixed content, it's not like, it's not a magic pill. Sometimes, you know, you have to do some manual labor to fix, but this really helps with, like I said, 90, 95% uh, of the issues. Um, it does, it can do the redirect from HTTP to HTTPS. For example, if we look at uh, this site, which we talked about right now, it's not secure. And you can see the message here, which some people, uh, you know, agreeable, yeah. they, they're scared to enter their details because it says here, you should not enter any sensitive information. For example, credit cards, of course, but even if you put in your email address for a newsletter, it can be hacked. So this is not a good uh, um, message to get on your site. <clears throat> Apart from that, uh, SSL also can improve your, your um, performance of the site because it, use, it uses HTTP2 technology, which in short terms gives you more connections to the server, thus bringing you, giving you higher uh, website speed. Look at this okay. here. You see here it says, I just typed in HTTPS, and now we're getting the, you know, the, the padlock which is working and which means like for this site, there is SSL installed on the server, but the configuration in WordPress is telling use HTTP, don't use HTTPS. So in this case, installing and activating this plugin would probably uh, solve this issue. Um, so, the, the, you know, the, and this relates to SSL being a pretty uh, like, a standard these days. So um, uh, you, you can go install the plugin and probably most of your issues will go away. Sometimes they're not, you would then have to use other tools to investigate where that specific uh, element or asset or image is, is loading via HTTP and not HTTPS. Also today I found out, not today, but lately I found out that the Chrome browser if it uh, finds an uh, element that is HTTP, but your site is HTTPS, it dynamically adds the HTTPS to that uh, uh, source. So if you, by mistake, let's say you uh, created the site, you migrated it, whatever, it was HTTP. Now you load it via HTTPS, the Chrome browser knows how to add that HTTPS to older unsecured uh, assets. Of course, it's best to configure them ahead of time HTTPS, but that also saves you uh, from getting that, that warning. Uh, that really, thank you, uh, Dan, because I, that site that I didn't have the uh, SSL and uh, it was older site. And so I thought I could get it for free. I took it and it, was, it wasn't quite working. I knew I did something wrong, but I'll bet you all I needed was that really simple. Well, so you can try that on. really simple and, uh, yes. you know, it, it should, should help. And if it doesn't, you, so. you yeah. probably have I'll to do bet, yeah. a few more stuff by, by yourself. No, I'll bet money on that because they, it went through, they said it was installed. Everything was fine, except I couldn't get it after a while to show. So I bet you that's all it need to do. And it's an older version, older WordPress. Yeah. Well, so, we'll yeah. keep our yeah. fingers crossed for you. Oh no, I, I'm pretty sure. Next time you have to post it in the comments of the meetup. Okay, I will. No, thank you. I'm, I'm learning a lot tonight. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Robin, anything else to add? Uh, no, I, just on this question of SSL, I think it's um, the amount of work involved is really a function of the size and age of the site. The older and the larger, the more yeah. complex the transition will be. And that sort of stands to reason that, like most things in life, 
the longer and bigger that you are, uh, the more complicated it is to make a, a, a fundamental change in the way that you work internally. And that's what SSL does. So on a brand new site with no content, it's like one click and you're off to the races and the issue will never arise. If you have 500 URLs in your posts, um, then you've got you know 500 instances of insecure content that you have to fix. Um, the, the really simple SSL plugin has mechanisms that enable you to avoid making those fixes or repairs or whatever you want to call them. But that is, in a sense, a stopgap solution, um, which has its place for sure. But it's a stopgap. Yeah. So I see also here that uh, Lorenzo helped Rick. Thank you, Lorenzo. And Rick's, uh, he's not here, but he did a reply and said all fixed. So I guess uh, this, this, this issue was fixed for him. Um, I don't see any more comments here. So we still have about uh, yeah, a bit more than an hour if we want to talk about stuff. Uh, so it's open floor. If you have an issue you want to talk about, you want to talk about not an issue, about an idea or any other thing that's on your mind, you're welcome to. I usually just sit and listen. You got me now. <laughs> um, okay, we've had really simple SSL. Has anyone got a checklist for hosting services? What wow. to look for? For well, it really depends. Uh, I would I usually go with the big hosting providers, the bigger ones, the one that you pay maybe a bit more, but you get lots more service. Mm -hmm. I would uh, shy away from hosting services that say, okay, it's one dollar a month or three dollars a month, <laughs> because you get what you pay for. And, yeah, I was uh, going to say TGTBT, too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, usually. Or, or just you get what you pay for. Yeah, and if you're precisely. Almost nothing. You're getting almost nothing. Uh, yeah. The mere connectivity, you know, the access to a server isn't all that much of a deal in terms of cost or price. It's all the things around it the security, the backups, the, the service, the availability of support to help you work your way through a problem, whether it offers yeah. staging or not. You know whether it offers. Wait a minute. Uh, everybody offers free SSL now because they get What's it free. staging? Oh. Robin. I'm sorry. What is staging? Oh dear. You asked about <laughs> local versus development servers, or developing uh, a site locally. You're developing it in a development as a okay. development site. Well, staging is sort of between those two. Staging is um, a way to implement changes on a copy of the site. And depending on the quality of the staging, have those changes moved to the production site, both the database okay. and its files. The more okay. you pay your host, the better the staging option will be. Okay. Uh, 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 so a really Go good ahead. host, a managed services host, which costs 10 times as much per month, mm -hmm. will give you a one-click staging site. Beautiful. In mm -hmm. other words, you can have a site just to play with, and when something works, you click a button and instantly it, the change is put through on your real site. But okay. there's a price. I yeah. would say the ballpark number cost for a good hosting provider would be between 10 and $20 a month. Okay, that's a good ballpark to have. Right. And so a premium uh -huh. one goes about 30. Well, like I would have just look at Pantheon the other day and their basic site starts at 30 US a month. Whoa. But they offer a whole lot of really interesting, useful well, stuff. Come and give me right, and it just depends be, on how valuable your time is, whether that or not would be too much for site. No. I would suggest, you know, you can look at, um, for example, Get Flywheel, which is a company mm -hmm. that was purchased by another company, a very big company, WP Engine, which does a great job. And they do, I think it's like, they have 13 or $15 a month and I, I highly recommend them. But again, there are like, like 
maybe Pantheon this, has a lower tier or Cloudways or yeah. Gensta. There, there are quite a bit of them. I started looking for Canadian ones. That was a toughie. Well, hosts also was, tend mm. to be uh, focused or oriented to certain niches in the marketplace. And Dan mentioned, um, uh, is it Flywheel? Because I think that's the one that sort of targets designers, designers and agencies and such. Sort of more, the more yeah, creative do, sort of side of the brain, too. in theory, yeah. is, is, is the market that they say they're after. Um, SiteGround uh, used to be the hosting outfit that got the most recommendations. Um, at least that was the case two or three years ago. I'm not sure if it's still as popular. It probably is. It's certainly big and mm -hmm. very, very good quality. Uh, I mean, I've used it and had good results. Um, and it has inexpensive to and moderately priced packages. Um, and what you'll find is that there's several tiers to the to the way the hosting market is organized. Mm -hmm. the basic sort of level, uh, a middle level, which the um, a flywheel and others occupy, and then a, a top layer, which they can refer to as managed WordPress, in mm. which they offer even more services that relate to how your website runs and performs, in addition to the basic things that all hosts provide. Yeah, I'm with Bluehost. I've been with them for years because they were around in years and ah. they did change. And then I found the one in Montreal, Web Hosting Canada. And that's interesting. That's uh, so far they've had, when I've had to move a site over, they've moved it all over for me, backed it all up, even taken all the mail, like they just do it. And I'm thinking, thank you. And they don't charge me. And come on, my name's Campbell and I'm frugal. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm frugal, so I don't want to pay. <laughs> so, yeah. so, far they've been, so far they've been good. And uh, I was with one out that's in Mississauga, Host Papa. But I, I'm not too sure about them anymore. Yeah, I think they took over. Somebody else took over, huh? Just the, the, the screen I'm showing now for. I just googled hosting ah. in Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. So Google oh, is your friend, and you should do some research if you want a Canadian who did they, company. Who did they come up with? Uh, Mango. Web hosting Canada, that one. They yeah, have well, good support. Can, I have yeah, to admit, I have. The one. I, 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 they have fairly good support. I've been okay with them. So I'm going to go look for that. I didn't know they had that one. Yeah, Mango Matter Media. Yeah, and I noticed on a lot of the um, links and promotions on the w WordPress site, they're pushing Bluehost. So, Dale, you use that one? Well, I started years and years ago. And, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix. Mm. And, uh, I wouldn't go to Bluehost myself. Yeah, no. see, a lot of people wouldn't, but you see, I was, I've been there so long, and I guess everything worked well, and I just left it. But I, yeah. I don't, it's only for my own. I don't do a lot of fancy. Do you know what I mean? It's my little website. I don't. Another tier of hosting right, okay. uh, that started to show a few years ago, and companies like WP Engine and, and Flywheel, they do just that, is a hosting which is called Managed WordPress Hosting. Yeah. So oh. when you go and look for hosting, you will see Linux hosting, you'll see website hosting, you'll see Windows hosting, but you also will see managed WordPress oh. hosting. Yeah. What that means is that they do uh, specifically charter, cater to uh, WordPress sites uh, in the means of that you have like one click install and you would have uh, backups and restore, and they're more oriented to giving you solutions for uh, WordPress. Some of them, when you install your WordPress site on their hosting uh, uh, platforms, they pre-install your site with plugins. With some of them are good, some of them are not so good, some of them are bad. But you should know about that. Mm -hmm. So that's another niche, which is. Some companies just call it that way. They give you exactly the same service, but they mark up the prices. Yeah. Um, right, so you should, sure. you should, like with everything, you should do your research. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the rule of thumb here is, you know, you get what you pay for, what we said at the beginning. Yeah. Um, companies charging more will usually give you, they, they can't afford to, to give you bad service, right? Um, That's but right. Some companies charging a dollar or three dollars or even five dollars, they, they don't care. 
No. Well, I, I note that $10, around that area, 10, like 10, $12, that's for, that seems to be, unless you want a huge amount, you know what I mean? Like it usually covers pretty yeah. much. Yeah, but I, I think that like for your site, between 10 and $20 a month, that's a cost that I would, you know, if I were building yeah, my own I, I really site, can't afford a lot. Um, we're a freelancer household, always have been. Well, they, so, have, yeah. usually have a, they usually have an intro price so that you take it for so many years. But, they, Susan, I'll ask you another a different question. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have your, your site, your, your Susan uh, Solutions Susan site. Susan Solutions. <laughs> yeah, and you invest about an hour a week with that site. Mm -hmm. okay? So you've invested 50 hours a year, uh, which, you know, let's say your hour is worth $100, okay? Mm -hmm. Just for the this game. So you've invested $5,000 in this site worth of, of your time. Mm -hmm. And now you're hosting at a hosting provider, $3 a month. So you're putting $36 every month, mm. every year. And that hosting provider is not so good. The site goes down. You lose ranking with Google. Sometimes you even sometimes things disappear. So you invested five thousand dollars of your time, but only thirty six dollars of hosting. So think if you invested three hundred sixty dollars of hosting or two hundred dollars of hosting, but you're sure that your site will always be online and you will always right. get support. And you will you you sleep good at night knowing that you wake up in the morning and, you, and your site will be there. It will be there, yes. So how much is that worth? Yeah, well, it's like the formula. How, what percentage of your sales, net sales, um, do you spend on marketing? Yeah. Exactly. You know, is it five percent or twenty percent or whatever? Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's very good to hear because um, I think those things, but I don't always apply them. Yeah, usually people so. people usually oversee that and they think, yeah, I'll get it cheap, but sometimes it can be very expensive to get cheap. Right. And, and the expensive is not that expensive. It's not like we're asking you to host a site for ten thousand dollars a year, right? Yeah. And you see, that's the kind of numbers I have in my mind because I've set up websites for companies that I work for, like I do. Uh, PR and communications and sometimes you get to be the web designer too um, and so I've sort of always thought oh my god I've got to spend 10 grand on this I just can't um, so well, yeah if, if but, your site has a million visitors a day you better have a ten thousand dollar oh uh, that would be wonderful <laughs> but no good point thank you sure Dale, you had something to you wanted to add? No, no, I no, I, I, I found that I found that uh, usually, if I could, if they're a good hosting company, it really does make a big difference. And if I can call them and they they fix for me, they make me look good, especially with my clients. Right, that's when I figure oh, I for get sure. a big plus. For sure. But I, I just need solid, and I need someone you pick up the phone. I like that. I like people to have a phone you know, so that they actually have a real person because I don't, then I know what I'm getting. I know that's silly, isn't it? Because I mean, we're on the internet all the time, but I, <laughs> sometimes a real voice and a real phone, you get a good idea who you're dealing with. I myself prefer the chat option and I, I, I like the chat, but you know, if they have a phone, not all of them have phones, not all of them have chats, but yeah. You it's usually I've like. been typing for hours trying to explain what the heck I want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fern, how are you doing? You've been quiet um, tonight. Well, I'm, uh, yeah, well, I'm on site ground. Who else is on site ground here? I have a few sites on site ground. Yeah, and, um, you know, I've been with a few years, you know, um, if ever there's a problem, they're instantaneous, and it's 24, it's 24 seven, the phone, talking to people. But um, they're, they're a bit pricey. If you're only paying per month for the year, it's pricey. It's it's much cheaper when you're just starting out. And, and anyway, if you take it for three years, it's a fair bit cheaper. But then you've got upfront three years cost. You know what I mean? And that's <clears throat> what's holding you up. And when you're just going like month to month, like the yearly rate, it's 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 pricier. My only concern, um, I have no complaints about them. The only concern is 
I'm, I don't know if I'm paying for fancy things that I don't use. I don't know if I'm paying which, which for... Which plan, Fern, do you have? Uh, oh, just basic. Okay. Uh, I, got, I got the... As, as I recall, that's... Is that not, what, three, four, five dollars a month? Oh, no. that That's when you're first joining. Oh, okay. No, so you're talking more, about after the initial more like, discount, right? Mine's more like 12, 12 a month kind of thing. Yeah. I'm not sure right now. But I've yeah. never, I, I thought those were way too expensive for what you got after the discount. So I just made sure to always get a discount. And, uh, but that turned out to be more, more work than it was worth uh -huh. in any event. So, well, I've tried to negotiate with them and they're, they're, you know, they're in Europe somewhere and they don't, they don't, there's no, is they're very black and white. There's no negotiation. It's actually, it's Bulgaria, I think. Sophia yes. in Bulgaria, if I've got it right. Yeah. And, um, you know, I haven't had the, the time. Now you guys are showing me, oh, you can Google all kinds of Canadian hosts and I can see some really cheap prices there, but I have no idea who they are. There's ratings. I don't know. I wouldn't know where to start. A lot of these, what's it, these ones that they got listed here are beginner prices, two ninety five. That's like the first. Yeah, you, you that's pay what for they about do. three they years. Capture their audience. About, yeah, you pay for about three years at four dollars a month or something silly like that. Uh, yeah, and you still have to upfront that for three years. That you know, a big <clears> chunk. Yeah. For, you know, I don't. I don't like that right now. But I mean, I, you know, um, I don't need anything fancy because I've only got the one website and. Um, it's they back it up and everything, you know, it, it, it comes with the SSL and all that stuff. Just, but I mean, I could always go to one of these other companies and get the cheap mm. rate for a while and then go back to site ground later. But well, again, I Fern, don't, the time you spend moving back and forth, right, and dealing right. with the website and dealing with yeah. issues, is that worth yeah. the three dollars? No, no, I'm already paying. Um, uh, Email marketing, they're called Get Response. They're also in Poland. They're, they, they help you with like um, your Facebook ad campaigns and, and, and um, ge lead generation. It's, it's, and I'm, I'm already paying them uh, yeah. 12 US dollars a month too. And that's, and I, I, all, I you know, I always need to, to create a newsletter and send it to a lead or something. So, I mean, I, I, I'm using it. <laughs> so, um, you know, these things all add up. Yeah, yeah. All right, anyone else has uh, some? One else? question about selling online PayPal. Sure. Uh, I gather I use PayPal now. You can usually buy them whatever and you, they don't charge you. But if you are selling, you have to be a business, right? And you do have to pay? Anybody know? No, I, I don't know. Okay. I know there are two <laughs> options to embed a PayPal button. On your oh, no, I don't have to do that. It's just that I'm talking about, uh, somebody just told me recently that if you're going to sell something and use your PayPal account, they want you to be business sort of thing. I didn't know whether anybody was using it or not. No? Okay. No problem. <laughs> just thought I'd throw it in just to confuse everybody. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Hello, I'm Parveen. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. So here I am here because uh, I have a question because I created a, a website and uh, the problem is uh, the traffic. How I can get a traffic for my website? Traffic to your website? Yeah. That's the million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I really working hard at my links and backlinks I'm putting everywhere, but uh, my uh, traffic is not, I'm not getting the traffic enough, so I'm worried about it. Uh, Robin, I think you've been pitched. Yes, tell <laughs> us what the site, uh, what you want to do with the site. Why don't you close down your screen share for a moment, Dan, so we can see yeah. more people. Sorry. Uh, sure. Or sorry, whoever that was. So Great. my uh, website is, uh, I created about the deals and flyers. Is it online? Can we see it? Yes. Would mm. you like to share a screen or would you like me to go to the site? Okay, you can also go. It's uh, called flyzone.ca 
Hold on. F L F L Y E R Z O N E dot C A. Oh. Okay, so tell us before we before we tell you how you get traffic, or before Robin tells you how you get traffic, tell us what this website is about. Yes, uh, uh, can you get it? Well, uh, usually I go to the site I read, but now I have the website owner can talk. If okay, every okay. site I visited I had the website owner, that would be great. Okay. So you can tell us. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, actually, uh, you can check if you go to the um, categories. It, this this uh, website about the different uh, flyers about. You can go and check the flyers deals. Mm -hmm. They're listed all. Both, they're listed on the page here. No frills, whatever. Is this your ad? Yes, I have also had sense on my website. But this is not an ad for your business. This is just an AdSense ad, right? Yes, yes. Oh. So you provide uh, consumers with um, a collection of flyers that by category of product or? Yes, yeah, these are the flyers. I see these are grocery flyers. Yes, you can go and check the every store grocery flyers deals. Right. And because here is, uh, I mostly uh, added the 12 uh, big box flyers, flyers. Right. So anybody can go and check the what is going and this and that, and which type deals they can get. Right. And yeah. so do you provide anything in addition to those? So you collect these flyers from the, uh, stores themselves uh, yes, copy sir. them or whatever and put them on your site and then yes. you want to bring traffic to your site yes to sell so that you can sell ads presumably right uh, uh, what like is? grand toy ads or whatever what's uh, your business plan of the site i just want to make a website because uh, i am a housewife so i i i was looking many sites like this so i thought maybe i can also create like this right i'm just right now looking at a site called flip f l i p p okay i happen to have on my uh, iphone an mm -hmm. an app called flip which mm -hmm. is a aggregator of grocery store well any retail stores flyers Yes. Uh, yes. So yes. rather than collect them all individually, you go to one place and it collects them for you. That yes. Looks yes. Like of what course. You are doing as well. Yes. Uh, are you familiar with the flip site? Yes, I know. I know many sites. I know. Right. So one of the things that you need to do initially mm -hmm. is decide what makes your site more useful mm -hmm. to your target customer mm -hmm. than these other existing competitive sites. Mm -hmm. And in the process, you'll define who it is you're trying to attract. Okay. I mean, in other words, describe your ideal user slash, uh, um, yeah, site user. And mm -hmm. you need to know that in order to then go and find ways to reach those people and tell mm -hmm. them what you offer. Um, building traffic to a site is a moderately complicated exercise. Yes. That's, I mean, that's not really something that we can do mm -hmm. much more than simply start you off in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And so what I offer to you is that, is it your browser that we're looking at, Dan, or? Yeah. Why don't you go um, Google uh, Neil, N-I-N-E-I-L Patel, P-A-T-E-L. Okay. Um, let me just see here. Yeah, his site's just called uh, neilpatel.com. Mm -hmm. And um, of the uh, SEO specialized marketing gurus on the internet, mm -hmm. probably the most readable and easy to start up with is this guy. Mm -hmm. So he'll 
offer to teach you everything you need to know. And I think that if you actually followed his directions and read mm -hmm. his blog posts, mm -hmm. you could probably build your traffic fairly successfully. In other mm -hmm. words, he doesn't offer anything magical. He simply gives you the steps you need to take mm -hmm. and the work you need to do, mm -hmm. but he's a good guide. Yes. Um, there are hundreds, if not thousands of guides mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. So he's not the only one, but there's, you will not, you'll not be wasting your time to mm -hmm. get to know a bit of that guy's site and mm -hmm. then look for better versions of the same sort of thing if you want. But at mm -hmm. least you have somewhere to start. Okay, thank you. And it will give you the basic orientation okay. of what this exercise of SEO is all about, which is who am I going for? Mm -hmm. What do they want to find? How do I tell them I've got it? And what do I have to do when they get here to make sure that they find what they came for? Mm -hmm. Once you can do those four things successfully, you'll have lots of traffic. Mm -hmm. Most of us find those things hard to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then that's life, right? I mean, in theory, <laughs> there are instructions for practically everything, but it's a carrying them out that's the difficult part. Yes. So that's ah. a good start. And then simply, um, um, I'm trying to think of, um, I guess there's, you can't really say any of the SEO plugins are simple ones. Mm. Um, Dan, what would you, I mean, there's I, Yoast I, and, the, I would and think... the other big one. Um, well, you have, uh plugins you have yoast you have uh, meta seo but i would think the plugin stage is it's uh, it's later down the road well they, they do provide a bit of a structure for the exercise and so that's worth something but it's easy to get lost in the complexity and details because they would really like to take over your mind in the mm -hmm. process in, a, in effect mm -hmm. you can become obsessive about mm -hmm. seo um but um uh, <laughs> such is life. Oh, thank you. If I, anybody I, else has, I mean, I can't say that I find this particular guy personally, um, you know, what I myself need from time to time, but I found him useful to, for other people. The other thing to bear in mind is that YouTube um, can have some really excellent content and it's in the most easily uh, digested form you know, someone talking to you. Um, yeah, I would forget about all of the uh, stuff he's trying to sell you and just go with the information mm -hmm. that he offers for free. Huh. I, I personally don't know anybody who's bought that stuff, but um, <laughs> um, but he's a, bit, he's a bit of a legend on the internet. Yes, uh, yes. What's that I wine know. guy's name? Gary Vanderchuk or something? Mm -hmm. Does anybody remember that guy? Anyway, he was a guy who started out in the very early days of the internet um, promoting his father's discount wine business out of uh, somewhere in Manhattan, probably. <laughs> anyway, he became a brilliant direct marketer. So yeah. when the internet came along, just at the perfect time for him, he got into it very early and, and was totally obsessed by the thing. And in the space of two or three years, built this wine discount e-commerce business into a juggernaut and became mm -hmm. quite famous in the process as a keynote speaker and such. Um, he does tend to be the sort of guy though that after you've heard him for a while there's a sameness that comes over you and, uh, <laughs> and it becomes quite tiring. Um, but they are helpful for getting you oriented and uh, building up some enthusiasm you know for the task at hand and so in that respect they can be um, they can be helpful to you. Thank you very much. You guys are helping. Well, I've got this client yes. who's helped him again because he's putting together something and he, he doesn't know how what he's doing, like the SEO. And so this is perfect. That that talent, that's exactly what he needs. He and he loves to read, so I'm gonna let him read it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's kind of a personal yeah, guy. Yeah. And so he sort of he does do a good job, whether he think whether he realizes or not, of the importance of putting people into the picture when Thank you're selling. You. Yes. And uh, I remember um, doing some work for Microsoft years ago and making the distinction between informational and promotional information. And the rule was that for promotional information, there had to be people in the picture, so to speak, or present, because that made it more human and more relatable. 
that, uh, that's technical documentation, informational stuff. Who cares? You that's know, you're not reading it because you want to. You're reading it because you have to. So yeah, but that's you, so to speak. yeah. Um, I've been on yeah. his website and because he's got all this stuff and I'm saying, no, 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 these are people. Come on. Right. So when you see his yeah. face and bald head right up front, you know this is a promotional piece. Oh, yeah. And also. Yeah. But he's really uh, talented person, I think. Neil Patel. Yeah. And, and probably quite successful financially. Yes, yes. And Actually, I, I'm looking him from many years at YouTube also. There is also he has very good content at YouTube. Right. And just by the way, Elementor has really good YouTube content. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so if anybody's a YouTube, uh, a, an Elementor user, mm -hmm. um, their stuff is excellent. They have a really nice tutorial on templating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I uh, have the uh, Elementor. I downloaded Elementor at my website and I, I created with the Elementor. Mm -hmm. Elementor is no, really good software and it's very easy. I think if anybody know <clears throat> about Deeply, ah. it's really good software for a website developing. I ended up with Site Origin and, and I stayed with there because I needed some help when I started and I called in for support and the guy was so good and I don't know how he just sent me an email and just magic. So then I was doing something else and I emailed him. I said, well, I hope the next time I need help, I get you again, because I seem to always get them. And he said, well, you will, because they keep, when they assign you to that person. So no matter where I go, what I do, if I have a problem with site origin, there's my site my, my, my oh. super, superman and he just, well, he knows me. He knows what I've done. He knows where I'm at. And he keeps, they keep you, your client with the right uh, people that are helping them. And the others don't do that. So I know I'm a sucker, aren't I? But it's just so good. I, I, he's, my, he's my hero and he keeps helping me. <laughs> and I was going to say for Praveen, um, yeah. you know, check the public library. There's ebooks even because really marketing plans and promotional plans have not changed a lot. Yes, over yeah. And so if you were to do a little bit of reading and research into basic marketing for small mm. business, um, there are even courses at some of the community colleges you can take, four-week ones, um, and what have you. And it's really useful because that, and as I'm speaking from experience, that's one level of worker that has been wiped out of many companies business plans and they expect people to do it on their own but not everybody is a great marketer or promoter and do it yourself it's like me trying to design a decent website um, if I had a big marketer or promoter salary still um, I could hire people to do this sort of thing for you but or for me but it's become a really do-it-yourself world but you know get some basics in your mind before you go too far with Mr. Patel who might just oh get you so excited you won't get your nice website which I'd like to use right now to find out what this week's specials are um, so you see you've already promoted some traffic and it's just kind of common naturally yes yes no i'm trying but i also little successful but i think my website is not uh, old you i think for the new website it's a uh, little it's little uh, not easy we get the web, um, traffic very easily i think uh, you know, some people said if uh, our website is old then we can get a uh, more traffic but it could take time of course that's yes. the problem we all want it instantly yeah because anyway. it's all depend on our hard work how much how hard work we do our, at our website exactly yes. and you have to keep at it um I've been at it for like 15 years at least mm -hmm. uh, but I'm still working on it yes yeah thank you Suzanne Okay, talk to you again. <laughs> and the um, other person also, I don't know what is the name, but I forgot right now. I just see seeing your name. I think it so, was Robin. Robin. Yeah, yeah, Robin. Robin, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you question, for all. By the way. So I have a question. Uh, yeah, friend. Fire away. Yeah, okay. Well, um I I I'm I have someone that's helping me uh 
find a simpler method on Photoshop to just uh, compress photos, like really easy, save to web and just very easy. It, it's not as complicated when we had that brainstorming session a few months ago, you, you and me, all of you, you know, it, that was really complicated. But can you just remind me, I, I um, what is the um, software, what is the, uh, the program Whoops. And it can test all your images and tell you which images, which images are, which images are too big that you need to compress them. I, there's a few different ones that help you tell you right away uh, which images need compressing. Do you remember Talking about what, plugins do, on your site or uh, services um, not related to WordPress? Well, like there's G, something like G metrics, those, those types of, they tell you the speed. G, G metrics. I think they might all also, I can't remember if they also tell you which photographs, which images are a problem. They're, they're slowing down your site. Well, I think there's about two or three good ones that, that you can run it through your website and they'll tell you which photos need compressing. Dan, I've never used such a tool. I just look at the image. I can tell whether or not oh. it seems like an appropriate size. Oh, Whether it's yeah. the file size is appropriate to the resolution. And since I generally optimize everything that's over, say, 300K, yeah. I don't really need to think about it because uh, generally you can get okay. some decent compression out. A lot of it has to do with where did I get the image. And if it's an image from um, uh, a stock sub, uh, image supplier, they are often already optimized. Um, if it's somebody's logo, for instance, um, just a get info box and you can eyeball it and see, oh, if it's 50 uh, K, if it's 50 K or less, yeah. sure, go with it. If it's a really tiny file, it may be hundreds yeah. of bytes. You can go right. You can go go right on your own website and just go look at the Im open up the image. And right, but before the, the images get to the website, they're on your machine, right? You mean the originals? Right. The well, ones that you optimize mine are, for your mine, website. Mine are all in the media library. I mean, there's a. a in other words, you, you bring them directly from some source. How do you do that? Oh, I guess you import them. To, uh, okay, I've never imported directly oh. to the media library. I always bring them home locally because well, I always I have, have more a, images than I actually use. Yeah, I have them on the computer somewhere, but it might right. be and the reason And the reason to avoid any extra images on the site that may not be needed or used is of course that they make the backups larger and more cumbersome. So you want the media library to be small, always as small as possible. Burn no the, extras, the, nothing that isn't required. Actually, and therefore, you have a big collection of images on your local machine, and you simply upload those to the media oh, library yeah, after right. you've decided whether right. to optimize them or not. Well, you gave me a good idea because I, my my media library has got all kinds of stuff that comes from the theme that I don't even use. I really need to delete them all. There is a plugin it's, that will tell yeah. you what images in the media library are not used by any post or page. And I remember when I found that plugin, I really thought that I'd found something important because I had made this mistake and loaded a lot of images into the media library so that they would be available to choose when I wanted them in the future. And that tripled the size of my site. Most so I just took have... myself out into the garage and shot myself in the head. Most uh, some re-execution for- Most people, most people, whatever, I believe, they do have. <laughs> I'm not going to make that people, one again. <laughs> most people do have their images. The images from the website are, are still on the media library. If you ever need to make changes to it, like that's for right. sure. So, what so I'm, instead, make your workflow to download the images and save them on your own computer. Yeah. Yes. Decide whether you're going to use them or not. Check their size to see it's appropriate. Check the size. The file size seems reasonable for the quality you want, okay, and then so upload there's... them with a file name that's meaningful to you. Yeah. Um, Do all those things, just, and you'll find your life has become just, rather just, simpler just, down the line. Well, okay, but what I was going to say before, there's a lot of stuff I uh, that's not even mine 
in my media library from the theme. So you've given me an idea that I should spend some time, spend an hour you know, of my time once and just delete them all, the ones that I'm not even using. Right. So, because you're saying that that would that lighten up, would that help for the speed of the the, the website loading? No. No, that's that, not related to the speed of your site. Oh, well, then that's why I haven't done it yet. It's related to the hosting size, the size of your site. So, but oh, if well, the, if I don't if the need images them. are not displayed on any page, so they don't they won't slow your site because they're not loaded. Oh, the issue well, they're not in my mind is just a question of backups. Backups okay. become larger um, okay. and less okay. and more unwieldy, and um, okay. uh, and therefore you tend to do fewer backups. Um, yeah, you made when a good I point on my own computer. Yeah. I save for I have a, a, a reflex motion in my left hand, where yeah. I save about every two or three small work steps, like add a word, write a paragraph or a sentence. And the saving operation is just something I automatically do without thinking about in any really serious way. And so it should be the same thing with backups on your site, that if you're going to do something which has the potential to give you a headache if it doesn't work, and it's only going to take three minutes to do a backup, click, 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 then you're sort of crazy not to do it. If you have okay, machine you, space. You, but uh, if, you're, if your yeah. backups are hundreds of megabytes too large because of your media library, then, you know, you tend to do fewer of them and that's not good. Okay, but all of you, you nobody knows offhand a, a software that can tell you which images need work. Like none of you really well, know Well, it's kind offhand. of difficult to tell that from the outside looking in, obviously, uh, there are because a few how does, how does a, I remember a hearing about one. I remember hearing about a site like G GT Metric, something like Karen, that. You can install can a plugin, for example, Short Pixel. Short oh, Pixel. Okay, I've heard that name. Scans your site. And I think their free plan scans, you know, 100 images a month, which is probably enough for you. Um, okay. And then tells you uh, which images okay. need, need to be optimized. And sometimes it optimizes them by by itself. Another yeah. plugin call is called Smush. Right. But um, I, I, does I suspect that same? the one you mentioned, like Smush, has a free version, which all has the, plugins, the business not model, very much. And then the business a model paid version, that, which does twice as good a job optimizing images. Their business model is the amount of images you have. So if you have a they have a free plan usually up to 100 images, but then for 200 images, you pay uh, 10 cents per, uh, per image. Uh, and then for 500 uh, images, I I whichever have a, plan I have, you have. So um, yeah, I could check into both of those and see who has the free version and, and work, work from there. Um, I'll have a look and see if I can find the plugin. Okay. The note that I made about unused images uh, because I think that's particularly valuable if you're if you've only learned a lesson recently about what to put in the media library. Now you mentioned 300k. What about the banner, the big banner, the big banner? Uh, you know, the hero, the hero image at the top. Are they 300k? Like Gee, you know, these sorts uh, of questions, Vern. You really should learn to figure out for yourself because they they're just such everyday questions that are part of the basic sort of tool set that we work with to, to have an image, open it up, see its size, look at the file and say, gee, that's really big. That's like a megabyte and a half for an 800 by 1200 image. That's way too big. That should be more like 200 or 250. Well, as you're- right? and How do you do that? You, you learn that by simply processing images and learning from experience. I mean, there's yeah. Yeah. no tool that's gonna do that good a yeah. job. Yeah, uh, any graphic thing like Corel or hell, I'm using one that's way back, uh, multi, uh, one from Fireworks that was Micromedia. But you go in there and you can reduce it. it tell, they tell you how to reduce it, the size and the actual download size. Now, Dale, I think Fern's question is, I know how to reduce I need it. a tool that will tell me what to do about this image. Is it too big? Is the file size too big or is the resolution wrong? And I, you know, Dan's given her two plugins that yeah. deal with this issue. 
I express some doubt as to whether a tool is the thing to use rather than just simply learning how to do it by inspecting it yourself. Get the file, use the get info or properties box, see its size and dimensions, make your decision, try it out, go back, fix it, try it again. Um, I find, for example, things like uh, images that I've uh, exported from um, the Mac or iOS Photos app, you know, that I take in with my iPhone, are gargantuan images. And I'm, I'm telling you, these things are at least 10 times as big as they should be. So um, I exported an image uh, the other day, and uh, it was an image that was only in real life, I don't know, 400 by 700. The camera's in resolution was like 3,000 by 4,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was absurd. Yeah, all these cameras are very high resolution, so you have to optimize the image if you want to use right, it. Right, but I, I, I'm just saying that having seen can... one image exported from iPhoto from my camera, this particular camera, I don't need to see any more. I know automatically that when I optimize one of those, they'll go from a megabyte and a half to 250 to 300K, uh, and I'll drop them down to a third the size the resolution, and they'll work just fine. They'll, there's no way you can tell them the two apart, the old and the new. And, and that, you you, so you learn that particular thing about that particular camera and you're good to go. You go to a stock agency and you see that all their images are or aren't compressed, optimized, <clears> and therefore you know in the future. I've got to optimize you standardize your size, I'm not sure what your site is about, um, Fern, but if you pick a standard size for your photos, for instance, on JazzWord, I will have files that I can do, you know, a 19 inch print from, but I only want it to show up five by seven with not a really high resolution because people love to steal your photos. So all my JazzWord photos, I go to image resize. This is in Photoshop elements, but if you've got Photoshop, you've got I one. Do, yes. Um, image resize, pixels 400 for the width, no matter what, it sets the height um, and I change the resolution, but change the resolution first because that affects your pixel width. But you pick what standard sizes you want, and then those are just the formula. I mean, that's sleepy time when I'm processing stuff from a concert. Um, it's just resizing everything to 400 pixels wide. And that also keeps your site looking very orderly if they're all the same size, the same resolution. And there's but, but it can't be it can't be the same. It can't be the same for the big hero image at the top as full width of the page. Right, so the, the smaller ones, yeah, that's that. I was just, I can Google it in one second, they'll tell me what's the standard, you know, for the hero. Yeah, so pick what you need, um, that may be yeah. set preset by your WordPress template, even so. Then you'll know and you crop and enlarge or reduce or whatever you need to do. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not I think quite like to... um, the social media sites where you can Google and find the uh, dimensions that are recommended for the four or five different mm. images, for instance, on Facebook. And so they tell you exactly yeah. the dimensions for what you want to use where. It would be nice if you could do the same thing for your own site, but you'd have to figure it out all yourself. And there yeah. isn't any place to Google. I mean, there, there will be no answer of value Googling what's the standard hero image size. It will give you a range yeah. because, yeah. you know, for example, are there borders on the page or not? That obviously affects the hero image. Right, um, uh, at a minimum, and also there are different views on how large an image should be for a hero image use, and so that's a little bit of a specialized question regarding that kind of image. But the bottom line is, is you should have your own your own um, cheat sheet that tells you the desired resolutions for images, um, and then just with practice, you'll learn without having a tool. Uh, that for a given size of image, what's an appropriate file size. And, and sometimes that will depend on how complex the image is. If it's a photograph of, um, you know, um, if, of a forest that's got an incredible amount of detail, that'll be a bigger, fatter file than a pure blue sky with no detail in it at all.
It's just the nature well, of uh, how I, pixels I, work. I, I, I'm happy with all the Im the look of all the images and the resolution on my website. It's you know, uh, it's I'm in marketing and it's all um, it's a very creative site because I'm a creative side of the of the advertising agency person. But mm. the, I just, but I think that I I think that my my website is is probably on the slow side. So I thought I'd have a fast way to get a software that can scan it to say this is your this image is giving you a problem. That's all. I know how to go to save, save for web and quickly, uh -huh. like in one second, you can reduce it. And yes, you're right. You can take a look at what it looks like and the resolution. Just I'm <clears> happy <throat> with the look of my images. I just don't know if one of them is causing a problem. That's all. I haven't had the time to go through each image and figure out what's causing this a slightly slower loading time. All right, Fern, thank you very much. Uh, well, I think it's time to wrap up since it's uh, past 8.30. <laughs> time My head flies when you're having fun. Uh, so oh, thank, you. thank you very much for participating, for coming to our meetup. Our next meetup is next month, the third uh, Tuesday of the month. Oh, oh great. Oh, um, thanks. Um, thanks, Dan. Some, sometimes some meetups don't have a December um, session, especially if it's a, the week or two before Christmas. But I think that the fact that we're not getting together physically, uh, which is that really busy time two weeks before Christmas, <clears> let's <throat> go ahead and have the meetup for that the week before Christmas uh, because it's online. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I'll mark my calendar now. <laughs> <laughs> right. And actually, if you found this to be helpful, because I think you said that, if you were to leave a comment on the, on the post, that would encourage other people to bring their issues or problems or requirements um, when they hear that, hey, you know, I brought my first question and then my second question and then my third question and yeah, and I, I did okay. No, it's great. I'm looking I'm, forward to see your thing, Susan. I'm looking forward. I know. To Let me see what so I just, can. Just, just by the way, I think most of you know no that solutions. we produce after the session uh, the recording as well as the the, um, the chat window texts. And uh, then I have notes, which I've been preparing as we've gone along, which I'll polish off. And um, it becomes a post on the WP Toronto website, um, oh. which Dan is taking to you. That's last month's recap. That's what we call them. Okay. And so, you know, maybe tomorrow or the next day, <laughs> I'll get the next post up. It'll be and, there. Um, and that's the video here. There's the video the, there. You click on it and it'll play it. And then we uh, blurbs for our sponsors. And then um, I usually list the people and the links used in the session and then the notes of the individual discussions. Oh, terrific. So yeah. that's a lot so of work. So you may find a few things in there that you didn't make notes on because you were paying attention. Um, or there's something which I have added after the fact that seemed useful. And um, I usually make those annotations uh, identifiable as such. And if you would like to make a donation, because we usually at our live meetups, we have pizza or some sort of snacks <laughs> um, and which we of course need money to pay for. So there is a link here for a donation of $5. Think of it as a tip jar. Yeah, a tip <laughs> jar. And once we go back live, Either we'll have a big party or we'll have we'll enough have, money for the next three meetups to have pizza and drinks. We'll have a big party. Sounds great. I, I've got my credit card here. I was wondering when this would show up again um, <laughs> because at this rate, I can afford to come back again next month <laughs> with some questions in between. So thanks again. Um, see you in December. Yeah, yeah. see you. Well, Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <clears throat>
But yes, let's do the December session, um, the two of us, and uh, and then let's.